Hello, and welcome to Johnny Among Spikes, your YouTube show for crazy combos and subpar card selections for that Rube Goldberg machine you call a magic deck. My name is Joshua Quentin Hickwood, and with this first episode, I'm looking to introduce myself, show off one of my decks, and this one happens to be a commander deck that uses the newest Esper Planeswalker, Aminatu, talk about the new Guilds of Ravnica set, and finally, at the end of each episode, I want to devote some time to talking about preparing for the backpacking trip that I'm planning to take in about a year. In other episodes, I will use this time to prepare an online portfolio of card design ideas, talk about and take part in the great designer search entries, and show off miscellaneous projects that will be used during my adventure. So first off, let me introduce myself. As I said, my name is Josh, and I've been playing Magic the Gathering for over 20 years now. Uh, the oldest deck I can remember building was a red-black deck that heavily relied on Drudge Skeletons and Lightning Bolts. Now, I enjoy playing pretty much any format of Magic, and strive to take cards that people hate and build functioning, interesting decks with them. Although I like to play any format, I truly love the breadth and depth of the Commander format, allowing the freedom and time needed to set up some of the most interesting combos and synergies that I can dream up. If one were to assign one of the psychographics to me, I'm pretty close to a Worthos Johnny, but from time to time I fall off the wagon and get completely consumed by the Super Johnny need to do something tremendously impressive such as permanently exiling a commander, or causing a combo that strands the game into a perpetual state of me losing an infinite number of times. Now that we've met, I'm going to take this opportunity to start an ongoing process I'm calling Advent Commander. For the next 100 days, I'm going to open a random pack of Magic the Gathering cards from any set that I can get a hold of, and I will choose one card from that pack to build a commander deck. I will want to reserve the right to choose one or two commanders at the end of the process to make sure that I don't shoehorn myself into an illegal deck by drafting cards that cannot be put into that commander deck. I'm also going to do my best to draft all the lands I need, including basics, but it may turn out I need to adjust the mana base once I've done. I want this to be a fun process, and hey, if you think I'm dumb and drafted the wrong card, let me know in the comments and tell me your pick. Or follow along with the deck building program of your choice and build your own commander deck from the pool I open. I look forward to seeing everyone's ideas. Alright, so let's do this. Today, we're starting with a pack of the new set, or the newest set I should say, uh, Guilds of Ravnica. as you can see, opened it right in front of the camera. So, let's take the token out and go through these. Alright, we got a Videlkin Mesmerist, a Fearless Halberder, Righteous Blow, Baratazan Bats, Portcullis Vine, Siege Worm, Goblin Electromancer, ooh, an Ocean Rain, Selesnia Locket, Swarm Guild Mage, City Watch Sphinx, Glow Spore Shaman, an Experimental Frenzy, and a Vicious Rumors, and a Demir Guildgate. Uh, so I will put up the cards at the end of this section so you can see all of them at once, but I have been wanting to try out Experimental Frenzy, and so... This is the first card I'm going to pick for my deck, and we'll see where it goes from here. I'll be looking to pick up, I guess, uh, a bunch of the Jumpstart cards from Guilds of Ravnica, possibly Flashback, um, Madness from older sets. So, we'll see how this goes, and if it uh, 
looks good. I mean, if I can't use it, uh, I'll also be able to just destroy the experimental frenzy. So, I, I think this will be a good, fun start. And that's the draw step. Alright, now that I've drawn the card for this episode, let's talk Constructed Commander. Right now I have four main commander decks that I'm running and improving, and my favorite is a toss-up between Magic's best widowed mother, Feiji Untouchable, or the little girl prophet, Aminatu. For today's deck, though, I'll be talking about Aminatu, which features my signature combo. A combo that has handed Mark Rosewater his first loss to Baron Glory back in 2008, and a passing note about it in the World's 2008 event report, and was featured as the Card of the Day feature for Johnny Week, August 3rd through the 7th of 2009. So, the combo starts by playing a Baron Glory. After that, I play an Oblivion Ring, and when the Oblivion Ring comes into play, I exile my own Baron Glory. I then find Lich's Mirror and play that. Then, on my opponent's turn, I cast one with nothing and hold priority to cast Spoils of the Vault. Uh, when the Spoils resolves, I name a card that isn't in my deck, and as long as there are more cards in my deck than I have life, this will cause me to lose the game. Lich's Mirror replaces this loss by making you shuffle all the permanents you own, cards in your hand, and cards in your graveyard back into your now empty library. This leaves the Baron Glory in exile, and the one with nothing on the stack. Your life total then becomes 20, and you draw 7 cards. Oblivion Rings leaves play trigger, returns the Baron Glory to play, and then the one with nothing resolves, discarding the 7 cards in your hand. Then you take your turn, and win the game during your upkeep. Now, over the years I've been fiddling with this specific combo, and found some easier ways to make the combo go off. First of all, you can replace the Spoils of the Vault with Plunge into Darkness to just pay all your life instead of relying on the deck having more cards than your life total. Really, any card that allows you to pay any amount of life will work, but this was the first one that fit the bill. Uh, and to reduce the number of cards in the combo, you can ignore the Lich's Mirror and the need to sacrifice all your life by playing with the card World Purge, and choose to keep zero cards in your hand as it resolves. There are also a lot of options that destroy all permanents if you include red, but uh, for today I'm going to stick to an Esper Shell. So here's my current Aminatu decklist that plays this combo. In addition to the Baron Glory combo, it plays a number of smaller combos that can be chained together to either set up your victory or to win through a turn or two in the mid to late game. The first thing, the caveat I have to make here is uh, make sure that your playgroup allows wishes. Um, I personally, as a commander player, always love to play with wishes or cards that get cards from outside the game. Uh, specifically in tournament scenes, we use the 10 card uh, sideboard rules and then use those as a wish board. But uh, casually, a lot of times I'll not care and just wish for things that I want as long as it's easily uh, findable in my pack and stuff. So like I said, just make sure that your playgroup's okay to use wishes and uh, yeah. Uh, in this deck I use two. I use Death Wish and Mastermind's Acquisition. Uh, Death Wish is fine. It can actually lower your life total to help you uh, get to that point where uh, Spoils of the Vault will actually kill you if you have a smaller library, and Mastermind's Acquisition can always be recurred and reused to get multiple of the uh, combo pieces. So in addition to my Baron Glory combo, I also have a Near Death Experience, which you can use with Angel's Grace or Stunning Reversal on your opponent's turn and the ability to kill yourself, which will leave your life total at 1, and then you'll win during your upkeep as long as you're still at 1. Then there is the Approach of the Second Sun, which I leave in the wishboard. Uh, it can just come into play whenever you need it, 
And then once you play it, you can use Spoils of the Vault to easily get it back into your hand. Um, I was using it with things like uh, Amanatu's Augury, but then it doesn't trigger the approach's second uh, ability unless you cast it from your hand. So even casting it from Exile won't win you the game necessarily, but it could always boost your life total a little bit. I also have a little, let's call it Infinite Doomsday, where I will play with Mirror of Fate. And now, uh, it used to only be able to work with the Relic of Progenitus, but uh, in the recent years they've printed more cards that kind of work with Relic, so this will work a little bit more consistently now. Uh, what you do is you play the Mirror of Fate, and then you put its ability on the stack. If you have any cards in exile, you'll be able to get a couple of them back on top of your deck, but what you'll want to do is, when you activate the Mirror of Fate, hold priority, and uh, then you'll activate the Relic of Progenitus or anything that can exile cards from your graveyard. And as part of the Mirror of Fate resolving, you'll be able to put it and the Relic back on top of your deck. So basically, you could just tutor every turn as long as you could keep drawing five cards a turn. And then the final, final combo. This one won't win you, win you the games, but it is probably the funniest thing I've ever come up with. And I really like doing this to unsuspecting people. And really, it's just one of those things where it's a personal win if I can ever get it to go off. The game ties, but man, is it fun. I call it blue screening a live action game of magic. And how I do this is with two cards. Lich's Mastery and Immortal Coil. Now Lich's Mastery says you can't lose the game, which is great. Immortal Coil the important text of it says, if you have no graveyard, then you lose the game. So, as long as you have the Lich's Mastery out, if you play uh, the Immortal Coil, and then remove your graveyard from the game, you will lose an infinite number of times. And since you're losing as a state-based action... Now, somebody could correct me if I'm wrong, but I looked this up, and I'm pretty confident about this. But even if somebody tries to react at this point with a disenchant or a uh, naturalize, you'll still lose because their uh, spell will go on the stack, SBEs will be checked, and then you'll still lose the game. And so you'll lose an infinite number of times while their spell is trying to resolve. Uh, like I said... Not really a profitable way to win a game, but kind of a funny thing to do, and I always feel like I win if I can get it to go off. So this deck list is by no means tuned, and I'm not one to over-tune a deck. I enjoy playing for fun and just kind of doing cool things. Uh, I do like, I do play to win, but it's not... I can still have fun losing, basically. Um, personally, I like to have multiple routes to victory, so I included a lot of combos I enjoy taking advantage of. But there's plenty of room to trim the excess combos you don't like, and add more control cards to protect your combo cards, or to counter spells that try to stop you from going off. I was going to make a joke here about how, as a Johnny, this step is a waste of time and you move on, but... I do have a probably contentious opinion on a subject. Return to Return to Ravnica, or Guilds of Ravnica if you want to be proper, brings with it the good old Shocklands, a cycle of dual lands that can either come into play tapped or they shock their controller. I don't particularly mind that these lands are being reprinted, but I hate that they're being brought back in yet another Ravnica set. When these lands were first printed in 2005, people asked why they didn't have names that were more closely connected to the guilds, like naming them the guild halls, such as Sunholm, Dusk Mantle, or Vitugazi. 
Design replied that by detaching the guilds from these lands, that would allow them to appear on other planes other than Ravnica. But here we are in 2018, where they're being reprinted. In Ravnica. For the third time. I would have appreciated more of them getting uh, printed back in uh, Dominaria and Corset 2019, and then opened up the land slots for something more interesting, like a cycle of Nimbus mazes, or maybe something new. I came up with this. I call it Dusk Mantle Underworld Panopticon. Basically, it reaches back into the olden days and uh, kind of works like uh, the mechanic in Lorwyn called Champion. Uh, when it comes into play, it doesn't come into play tapped, but it is legendary, so you can only have one of them. But when it comes into play, you exile an island or a swamp, and then you get an effect off of it. Uh, this land is the Demir uh, headquarters, obviously. So this one focuses on when you use the Demir ability Surveil, uh, you get to mill your opponent, which in Guilds of Ravnica, there were quite a few lacking cards of mill quality for the Demir, which is disappointing. So, in my opinion, I think there was an opportunity to ensure that these lands didn't appear in Ravnica again, and this would support Design's claim that they could appear on other planes. But then again, I'm just kind of happy to have a chance to regain these chase reprints, which I lost a couple of years ago. So, there's that. Alright, with that bit of disagreement aired, let's move on to my step second topic. I started this YouTube channel to help network with people that love to play Magic and to build up a fan base to help me go on a Magic and Dungeons and Dragons inspired adventure from my home in Dayton, Ohio to Redmond, Washington. In future episodes, I'm going to show off the progress I'm making toward that goal, whether it's answering questions or card design assignments from the great designer searches showing off my craft attempts to create a costume and accessories to wear during conventions and events, unboxing videos showing off the gear I'm planning on using on my trip, or taking on questions and requests from the comments on these videos. For now, I could say that starting this channel, and especially writing and recording this specific video, are big steps for me toward that goal. And after doing some more research into cosplay crafting, I expect to start building my character's initial costume here in the next couple of weeks. And with that, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this inaugural episode of Johnny Among Spikes, and I hope with time and practice, these will be coming out weekly. Please let me know what you think of this video in the comments, and I'll continue working toward my goal of literally walking the plains and mountains forests to Washington State. Thanks again, and please consider supporting my GoFundMe page, where if I can reach my goal, you'll see a fat man walk cross country in an attempt to land his dream job. Thanks again, and join me next time, where I'll talk about the standard deck I'm currently playing.